in this media we are going to learn about uh, different tanks I was receiving requests from people to cover some topics from gas tanker so I thought for it same so when we talk about IGC code then tanks are being categorized as integral tank membrane tank semi membrane tanks independent tanks and internal insulation tanks we are going to see all this in detail in addition to it now the independent tank tank that you see they have further you know, three categories the type a type b and type c while internal insulation tank okay this last one internal insulation tank include the two sub type 1 and type 2 tanks for transferring lng as a cargo imo type b now this is something which is MOS maritime spherical tank and membrane tank gas transport and technigas mainly are used new developments use imo type a tanks and type imo type c tanks for lng per propulsion so remember um, type c tank for lng propulsion on ship other than lng carriers imo type c tanks are preferable so remember this for lng propulsion what we are using is imo type c tank so you can see here uh, this diagrammatic representation here lng cargo uh, lng carrier cargo tank cross section okay now when we uh, talk about cargo containment system means why this tanks this barrier of primary barrier secondary barrier and all those things this is a way of containment means we are con we are trying to contain the cargo total arrangement for containing the including now what are these we have a primary barrier uh, okay the cargo tank the secondary barrier if fitted associated thermal insulation any intervening spaces and adjacent structure if necessary for the support of these elements now for cargoes carried at temperature between minus 10 degrees celsius and minus 55 degrees celsius the ship's hull may act as a secondary barrier now ship's hull is only acting as a secondary barrier when we have a cargo which is carried between minus 10 to minus 55 okay and in such cases it may be a boundary of the uh, secondary barrier and in such cases it may be a boundary of hold spaces the basic cargo tank types utilizes on board gas carriers are in accordance with the list below now when we talk about independent type a that we saw at the top that independent type some other types such as independent type B, internal insulation type, uh, sorry, internal insulation type uh, 1 and then independent type C that is internal insulation type 2. Now when we talk about membrane, now see independent tanks are commonly self-supporting and do not form part of the ship's hull structure. So this is the first thing that you are supposed to know. Moreover, they do not contribute to the hull strength of the ship. So they are not contributing to the hull strength of the ship. And as defined in the IGC code that and depending mainly on the design pressure, there are three different types of independent tanks for gas carriers. These are known as type A, type B and type C. Okay. Now, type A tank. When we talk about type A tank, they have uh, mainly constitute of flat surfaces uh, maximum design pressure is 0 0.7 bar this means cargo must be carried in a fully refrigerated condition at or near atmospheric pressure normally below 0 0.25 bar. now this type of tank as found on a fully refrigerated lpg carrier so this type of type a tank you'll basically in independent category in independent tank this is a subtype of an independent tank okay so you will find this on lpg carrier this is a self-supporting prismatic tank which requires conventional internal stiffening so internal stiffening in by a skin of foam insulation so in this example that we saw on the top is a foam insulation where uh, perlite insulation is used it would be found filling the whole of the whole spaces okay the material used for type a tanks is not crack propagation resistance therefore in order to ensure safety 
in the unlikely event of cargo tank leakage the secondary containment system is required this secondary containment system is known as secondary barrier and is a feature of all ships with type a tanks so whichever ship which will have type a tanks they, that will also have a secondary barrier and now these type a tanks are capable of carrying cargoes below minus 10 degree celsius okay i hope it is uh, minus 10 degree celsius okay uh, now you see here this is a diagrammatic representant what we are seeing here this is the primary barrier now what we talk about is a secondary barrier type a tank and as i said that ship's hull is only acting as secondary barrier in type a tank as i already said this is the bulkhead now this is the foam insulation that we talked about is this okay we have here is the ballast tanks and all this you can see double bottom tanks and we have wing tanks ballast tank whatever it is you call it okay now for a fully refrigerated lpg carrier which will not carry cargoes below minus 55 degree celsius the secondary barrier must be a complete barrier capable of containing the whole tank volume at a defined angle of heel and may form part of the ship's hull okay as you can see in the figure in general it is the design approach which is adopted by this means appro appropriate parts of the ship's hull are constructed of special steel capable of withstanding low temperature the alternative is to build a separate secondary barrier around each cargo tank the igc code stipulates that a secondary barrier must be able to contain tank leakages for a period of 15 days so this is also we are seeing the temperature we are seeing the pressure and insulation material and all those construction of the tank material and for what period it has to uh, do this leakage contain the leakage is for 15 days on such ships the space between the cargo tank sometimes referred to as the primary barrier and the secondary barrier is known as the hold space when flammable cargoes are being carried these spaces must be filled with inert gas to prevent a flammable atmosphere being created in the event of primary barrier leakages okay now you see here this is the tank dome that we are talking about and here you have the rubber seal these are the void space that we have and we have a skit so this is the example of that we are seeing imo type p tank we have already seen the type a tank now we have imo type tank this is the dome shell upper hemisphere that we are talking about dome shell lower hemisphere the skirt that we saw here this is the wedge space this is the insulation that we that is being provided now type b tank when we talk about type b tank can be constructed of flat surfaces or they may be spherical shape this type of containment system is the subject of much more detailed stress analysis so because that you see that tank is basically a part of the hull structure only type a tank but here it is it is more detailed analysis because it is in spherical in shape okay mm. Uh, compared to type a system these control must include an investigation of fatigue life and a crack propagation analysis so what we are doing here is that we are uh, investigating the fatigue failure and we also are investigating the crack propagation analysis that we are uh, doing it here but of type b tank is spherical tank this tank is of the cavenser moss design okay because of the enhanced design factor a type b tank require only a partial secondary barrier in the form of a drip tray the type b spherical tank is almost exclusively applied to lng ships seldom featuring in the lpg trade a type b tank however need to be spherical so it has to be spherical in shape there are type b tanks of prismatic shape in lng services the prismatic type b tank has the benefit of maximizing ship a uh, deck where the prismatic shape is used the maximum design vapor space pressure is as for type a tank limited to 0.7 bar now you see is the it is basically deployed in an lng ships now most moss type vessel have four to five tanks the insulation in these tank is provided by thick layer of foam insulation around the tank the tank are checked for any leakages by nitrogen atmosphere in the spherical thin layer called tin foil this layer also allow the insulation to remain dry 
these tanks are susceptible to con uh, contraction and expansion during cool down and warm up so that can um, do that can reach even two foot okay for these reason all piping come into the tank through the top part and are connected to the ship lines via flexible bellows the skirt is also constructed to endure changes in the tank diameter as well as it has enough to transfer successfully tank weight to ship hull the pressure in this tanks usually don't exceed 55 kilopascals that is 0.55 bar but in emergency cases it can reach the one pressure bar now when we talk about type c tanks that is normally spherical or cylindrical pressure when we talk about vessels having design pressure higher than 2 bar the cylindrical vessel may be tip, uh, vertically or horizontally mounted this type of containment system is always used for semi pressurized or fully pressurized gas carrier in the case of semi pressurized ship it can also be used for fully refrigerated carriage provided appropriate low temperature steel are used in tank construction type c tanks are designed and built to to conventional pressure vessel codes and as a result can be subjected to accurate stress analysis so here you see the order is like type a then we have more pressure which can take up is type b and then we have more pressure which can take up is the type c now the design stresses are kept low according to no secondary barriers required for type c tanks and the whole spaces can be filled with either inert gas or we can also use dry air unlike the other types where we have foam in this case of typical fully pressurized ship where the cargo is carried at ambient temperature the tank may be designed for a maximum working pressure of about 18 bar for a semi pressurized ship the cargo tank and associate are designed for a working pressure of approximately 5 to 7 bar and vacuum of 0.5 typically the tank steels for semi pressurized ships are capable of withstanding carriage temperature of minus 48 degree celsius for lpg or minus 104 degree celsius for ethylene of course an ethylene carrier may also be used to transport lpg that we can also do type c tanks are fitted in typical fully pressurized gas carrier with such an arrangement there is comparatively poor utilization of hull volume however this can be improved by using intersecting pressure vessel or bilobe type tanks which may be designed with a taper at the forward end of the ship you saw in the diagram that we had a taper this is a common arrangement in a semi pressurized ship okay now when we talk about membrane tank that is 0.7 to 1.5 mm thick the concept of the membrane content based on a very thin primary barrier membrane 0.7 it is the thickness of the membrane which is supported through an insulation and then we have an insulation altogether okay such tanks are not self supporting like the independent tank an inner hull forms the load bearing structure we have a inner hull which is forming the load bearing structure membrane containment system must always be provided with a secondary barrier uh, in independent tank there can be or there cannot be a secondary barrier but here it is mandatory to ensure the integrity of the total system in the event of primary barrier leakage the membrane is designed in such a way that the thermal expansion of contraction is compensated without over stressing the membrane itself there are two principal types of membrane system in common use both named after the companies who developed them and both designed primarily for carriage of lng these two com uh, companies have two combined into them is a semi membrane tanks the semi membrane concept is a variation of membrane tank system now this is a concept which is in a variation the primary barrier is much thicker than in the membrane system having flat sides and large roundish corner the tank is self supporting when empty but not in the loaded condition in this condition the liquid and the vapor pressure acting on the primary barrier are transmitted through the insulation to the inner hull as in the case with the membrane system Uh, now corner edges can be designed to accommodate expansion and contraction it is very obvious thing although semi membrane tanks are originally developed for the carriage of lng no commercial size lng carrier has yet been built to this design this system has however been adopted for use in lpg ships and several japanese built fully refrigerated lpg carriers have been delivered to this design when we talk about integral tank it is a structural part of the ship's hull and are influenced by same loads which stress the hull structure integral tanks are not normally allowed for the carriage of liquefied gas if the cargo 
temperature is below minus 10 degrees Celsius and certain tanks on a limited number of integral type so basically it is a part of the hull only and you see this is an integral barrier internal insulation tank internal tank they utilize insulation material to contain the cargo this and the insulation is fixed inside ships inner hull or to an independent load bearing surface the non self supporting system obviates the need for an independent tank and permits the carriage of fully refrigerated cargoes at carriage temperature as low as minus 55 degrees celsius the integral insulation system have been incorporated in a very limited number of fully refrigerated but to date the concept has not been proved satisfactorily so it is we are not using it at any case of it okay so i hope uh, things are clear for you that what are the different types of tank what are different types of independent tank then we are coming across what is type a type b and type c these are exclusive note which is already in condensed form uh, so i didn't want it to i just uh, gone through it because it is already in condensed and it is uh, in crisp way so there is self explanatory few things so you can pause the videos and then you can watch it together for you thank you so much thank you for your valuable time all the very best